I'm joined now by artist Aubrey Lamb. Aubrey, I had to be super generic and just mm -hmm. call you artist because you do so much. Mm -hmm. When did you realize art was your thing? Um, throughout my childhood, I was always into like doodling. I had like the gel pens and everything. And I was always just not paying attention during class. I was always just doodling on my notebook. <laughs> and finally, it was like when I took a graphics design class in high school, I was like, I feel like maybe I could like actually do this in real life and like go to be like an artist of sorts. So. Did you realize that you were good at it right away? Um, I felt like I was like okay at it. I mean, I never feel like I'm very good at anything, but um, I think that I knew I had a little bit of talent in there. I just had to like refine the skill. Um, so I just tried and kept doing it and put a bunch of practice into it. <clears throat> you also uh, do photography. Mm -hmm. um, you do pet portraits, mm -hmm. which are adorable. <laughs> I have you. to have you. Um, do a portrait of my dog. Um, <laughs> what what got you started on each of those paths? Um, I would say the pet portraits came when I got my own dog. Uh, I was never really a dog person until Missy came into my life and I realized how cute she was and I was like why don't I try to like do something with this and I realized everyone else loves their dogs so um, I figured it'd be a good way to make a little bit of side money so I can support my marker addiction and keep that going. <laughs> so I just started doing it and it turned out, like I usually don't dabble in the realistic type of things, but they turned out pretty good and I was like, all right. Is it hard to get the whimsy to come through? Because when I look at your mm -hmm. dog pictures, they look so, everybody looks, they all look so friendly and sweet. <laughs> yeah, is, it, they do. is that on purpose? Uh, I would say so. I try to make sure um, that the reference photo is taken like in sunlight when they're like happy because everyone, every dog likes to be outside. So they're happiest that way. And I would say it's hard to get the whimsy. I definitely have trouble taking it from serious to fun and cute. Well, they are adorable. So, okay, okay let's talk about your um, marker addiction. Mm -hmm. When did that start and how are you handling it? Um, it's been a few years now, probably like three or four, and it's rough. They're expensive <laughs> and they don't tell you that when you first get into it mm. and they work really well. So they come, they have like a bajillion colors. So I didn't know that before I got into it. <laughs> you um, have a coloring book. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. What, how, how do you even start <laughs> designing a coloring book. Um, I just, everyone was always like, I wish that I could color your pages or your doodles or whatever. So I think it was like 2018. I just spent a few months just doing that. I used a, I used a lot of like the doodles I already had and I like put them on my iPad and made them more um, like legit so I could blow them up. And uh, yeah, I did about 30 designs, I think, and turned it into a book that way. <clears throat> and you did it at the right time because mm -hmm. now there's like the craze of adult yeah, coloring yeah, books. Yeah, there's a huge craze. Do you have a favorite medium? Um, I would say marker and ink mm. is my favorite to use. How do you <clears throat> think that you've grown as an artist? Um, I think I've just grown a lot with like my practicing a lot, just doing it over and over. Um, and I look back on some of the things I made in like high school and I'm like, ooh. <laughs> can't believe that was cool back then. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, you know, with anybody, you just grow and like the trends change as well. So things that might have looked really cool 10 years ago, you're, it kind of looks a little bit dated now. So I think I've just practiced. What is the hardest part about creating, whether it be your graphic art or mm -hmm. your portraits, whatever it is? Mm -hmm. I would say whatever you have in your head, it's really hard to get in real life. So I might start something with what I have in my head and I try to get there and sometimes it just doesn't hit it at all and other times I'm like, okay, and it did what I was thinking about. I'm relieved to hear you say <laughs> that because I feel like most artists make it seem so simple to translate mm -hmm. what's in their brain onto yeah. the paper and mm -hmm. I, I don't understand how that happens. Great. What inspires your work? Um, pretty much anything day to day. Uh, I could look at just the way some like cords are laying around and I'd be like, that could be a cool pattern and it would just hit my brain and I'd go from there. Do you feel like you're always <clears throat> looking for patterns? I think so. Or do they yeah. just jump out at you? You can't help it. Uh, I think I can't help it. Like I'll look at anything and I'm like, oh, that's neat. And go from there. Start to finish, how long does a piece usually take? Um, definitely a few hours, at least probably like five to 20 hours, depending on what it is. Wow. And mm -hmm. do you get creative blocks or are you able to push through and 
Uh, definitely. I definitely go through phases. So there's times where I'm really into photography and then there's times where I'm really into just drawing. And usually when I'm like can't hit what I see in my head, I move on to the next thing for a while and then I come back to something and I can fix it and finish it. Is there any <laughs> media that you haven't tackled that you are interested in? Uh, I really like screen printing ah. and just painting in general. I've done a little bit with gouache, but I haven't done much more than that. I would really like to get into oils and other type of painting, watercolor too. When people see your work, what do you hope they take away from it? Um, I hope that they just feel like, like that's cool and I feel like it just adds a little bit of beauty to their life. Um, I want them to see whatever they feel out of it. Mm. I don't usually put something out there and expect them to feel a certain way. I think that it's just in the eye of the beholder and however you look at it and take it that day. Is, <clears throat> is creating cathartic for you? Do you get out all of th those emotions in your work? Oh, definitely. I would say so. When I made my coloring book, I was going through like a period of high anxiety and I would say it just helped me get through all of that. At the time, I would sit, home, sit at home for every day and draw for a few hours and I'd feel much better. <clears throat> what is the best part about being a creative? Um, I would say that you can just put yourself out there. Yeah. <laughs> I <don't> <laughs> fail. Is that, no, <laughs> is, that, is that hard to do? Is, I, I feel mm -hmm. like a lot of people, even if they are talented, mm -hmm have a hard time expressing themselves, putting themselves out there in that way. Mm -hmm. Is that a challenge at all? I think it is. I think it's hard to go from like just doing it in your house and trying to do things more outside of your house and show, showcasing it and um, just giving, showing other people. It's kind of hard to like show other people, be like, look what I put my heart into and see how they react to it. Do you think <clears throat> that Fort Wayne has been a, a good city for an artist? I think so. I think now that I've spent a lot of time like trying to get more into the art community, um, I've seen that they're constantly doing all the murals around town, which I think is beautiful. And then last summer, the Friends of the River did like a paddle project mm -hmm. where they had a bunch of artists do the paddles and everything. And I thought it was just fantastic to see the community come together and artists that like aren't well known throughout the community could participate in these things. Do you do you find inspiration in other artists' work, or is it more just in, in everyday life? Um, I would definitely say other artists, for sure. My, like, I follow on Instagram, like, about 900 other artists, <laughs> and I'm just constantly amazed by what people can put out there and create, and I would say just day-to-day -day as well. Just anything could, could inspire you. What does <laughs> a, a typical day in the life look like for you? Are you, do you create every day? Do you always try to, um, to make something beautiful? I try to. Uh, sometimes it's not always feasible, but I try to push myself. Um, this past October, I did the Instagram challenge of Inktober. Mm. So I did something every day and I really pushed myself to create a final piece every single day. And I found that was very challenging, but I thought it was really neat to see the progress I made and my skills and um, the different things I put out there. Cause sometimes I go through repetitive stages and do the same thing over and over, but I like it when I push myself because it pushes my boundaries. What makes a good artist? Um, I think just doing it mm. makes you good, yeah. I have a lot of artists tell me that the, the hardest part of what they do is knowing when you're finished. Mm -hmm. Do you have that problem or do you sort of know exactly what? Uh, I definitely have that problem. When I was uh, <laughs> gathering pieces for this piece, I was still going back and fixing things on some of them. And I've noticed, I do a lot of stuff with my iPad drawing, and I've noticed I'll go back and just continue to add it and change it and duplicate it and change it again from there, and it's hard to know when to finish. Is it, <clears throat> is it more fun to work electronically to, mm -hmm. to create on your iPad, or do you prefer to do it on paper? I love doing it on paper, but with the iPad, it's easier to change the colors and sure. to see what looks cool. So sometimes I'll start on the iPad and mess around with it, and then I'll go in real life and do it real on real paper. We talked about how sometimes it's hard to translate what's in your head and get it on to the page, but mm -hmm. do you always have a solid idea of what you want the piece to look like, or do you allow it to kind of take on a life of its own? It usually takes on a life as, of its own. Um, I'll just be sitting there either listening to music or watching TV or something, and, and before I know it, I'm like, all right, I guess we're going with this now. <laughs> Didn't know I would take that direction. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a favorite piece that you've created? Um, that's very difficult. I would say 
anything with like um, the bubbles. I do a lot of like little bubble things, so anything with that. But no, nothing really stands out that I, I've made. If you could go back to that high school student in a graphic design class, what mm -hmm. would you tell her about this journey that you've been on? Uh, I would tell her that you are an artist and just because you don't feel like it doesn't mean that you don't have value. Are you planning on staying here and, and continuing with, with all of the many facets <laughs> of your art? Um, for now, yeah, definitely. I like Fort Wayne. I think it's got a re really great community and I want to maybe someday do a mural out there in the streets of Fort Wayne. <laughs> so yeah, I think we have a lot to offer here. If you could allow us into your brain and mm -hmm. tell us what it is that um, inspires you, uh, what, what would it be? Uh, just everyday beauty. Mm. Would say. I love that. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the show, I say, mm -hmm. um, you know, find something beautiful, mm -hmm. and and I think that that you actually have to look for it. Yeah, I think so. All your work is so fun and inspiring. So thank yeah. you for taking the time to to chat with me today. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. <laughs>